Hi, welcome. This is uh, Josh Einstein from SaveJersey.com. We're here. We have the pleasure of interviewing uh, the chairman of the Freeholder Board, John Mitchell. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to listen, and um, we're going to have an interesting conversation. So I guess if you could uh, just um, you know, talk about your background, what got you involved uh, in politics for our readership, that, that would be a good start. Well, first off, thank you very much, Josh, for uh, inviting me to uh, speak with you tonight and your audience. Uh, well, you know, uh, ever since I was a kid, I've always been very interested in uh, in politics. Um, you know, when I was growing up, uh, uh, my mother and father would, would be discussing the political issues of the day and everything, and at a young age, they allowed me to engage in those conversations. So at a very young age, uh, I got involved. Uh, as we Fast forward through life, um, I moved to uh, Bergen County in 1992. Um, I spent uh, a couple of years in Washington um, uh, working uh, with uh, the executive branch. And then when I arrived, um, I jumped right into, I got involved with some local politics uh, in Cliffside Park. Um, um, for some reason, they immediately made me uh, vice president of the uh, political club, and then the following year, they made me president of the political club. And then the following year, I was running for uh, town council. Um, I ran uh, five times uh, in Cliffside Park. Um, each time, I got more and more votes. Um, while I was simultaneously uh, employed at uh, Consolidated Edison Company of New York, um, and um, I retired uh, in 2005, um, which gave me a lot more time to uh, focus in on um, rather than working a full-time job. And tra there was a lot of travel with my job. Uh, it allowed me to uh, get more focused on uh, uh, some of the political issues, um, including, you know, doing uh, campaigning. It gave me a little more time to go door to door, meet the voters, um, establish uh, policies, and uh, make recommendations to uh, elected officials. Uh, then um, in 2010, um, I put my hat in the ring to uh, run for uh, a Bergen County freeholder. I was uh, lucky enough uh, to actually win, uh, and I started uh, my assignment as a, a freeholder on January 1, 2011. And then my um, fellow freeholders, uh, both Democrat and Republican, uh, voted unanimously for me uh, to be their chairman. Uh, beginning of this year, 2012. Oh, that is quite a rise. Uh, what did you do in the executive branch in uh, D.C.? Um, I was trying to uh, co convince them to get off uh, foreign oil. Um, the, the, the federal government at that time, this is back in 89, 90, um, was um, much of their fuels uh, were purchased, uh, as you know, from um, uh, unfriendly countries in the Middle East. Uh, and um, I was uh, working in conjunction w w with my assignment at Con Edison with the American Gas Association, and I worked, I worked with them to uh, help them convert their vehicles to natural gas vehicles, which is uh, produced here in the United States, not, not a foreign, foreign source, and as well as uh, the added benefit of, uh, you know, creating a lot of retaining and creating more jobs and, um, and it certainly has environmental benefits. That sounds very interesting. What, what would you say um, has been one of the, the, the most crowning or proud achievements uh, in your career in uh, public life? Uh, to date? You know, um, I have been involved for many years in a variety of um, uh, charitable uh, endeavors. Um, you know, I was involved uh, with the wheelchair games with the, the VA. That clearly was uh, probably one of the highlights of uh, uh, working with people that have come back from um, uh, protecting our country, et cetera. And uh, just being involved with these heroes uh, has been a, a, was, was a great thing. I was, I was also involved with um, um, the organization, which I'm sure you heard of, um, the Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Uh, when I was at Con Edison, I ran a program there to uh, actually um, 
uh, help in the, uh, the publicity of that program, and we actually found children, which was uh, uh, and returned children to their to their parents. Um, I was also involved for oh, a good number of years in working with seniors, and many of the seniors who were widows, and you know just bringing some companionship to them. And those, and, and I could go on and on, but the, the crowning glory of, of doing all that, I became very involved with the Lisker Congregation Synagogue. I'm, I'm not Jewish, uh, but I, I became very friendly with the rabbi and the rabbi's wife uh, and son uh, there. And they um, were very involved in a lot of the energy efficiency things that I was, and I mentioned earlier a little bit. And they honored me as uh, as as the man of the year uh, back. Oh, I guess I was in 2005 or six. I forget. And you know, and they brought up a lot of the things that I had done, both on the uh, you know business side, as well as uh, you know on my own time. And uh, that was just a um, a wonderful thing. In fact, the official award that I received was called the Humanitarian of the Year. And uh, that was uh, a sort of a culmination of a lot of the things that I was doing. And it was, it was quite unexpected because uh, I was just retiring at the time, and I had a, uh, was working with them on a variety of different events, and they were kind enough to sort of surprise me about it. And, of course, you know, I brought my family and everything, and that was, that was a beautiful event. Oh, that sounds very nice. Um, towards your public policy experience and then your time in office, uh, what motivated you to uh, make that jump uh, to the uh, the freeholder board? Well, you know, uh, as you know, my wife can attest to. Uh, you know, I'd be watching something on TV, and I would say, hey, you know, that's not right, or reading something in the paper. Um, so, uh, you know, she, you know, you know, my my lifelong companion here, and she said, look, you know, why don't you try to do something at the county level? You know, and of course, as I mentioned earlier, I I had done things on the very local level, the town level, and you know, my my focus, of course, is uh, I thought I could bring um, a, some a, a business acumen to the the running of Bergen County government, um, and um, as it turns out, that we've had some uh, successes uh, for the two years that I have uh, that I have been there. Not only am I the uh, the chairman of the uh, the freeholder board, but I'm also the budget chairman, and I have been for the last two years. And uh, for the first time uh, in, I'm going to say, recorded history, which is true because they don't have records going back further than 25 years <laughs> uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, what the budgets and everything else look like. But for the first time, at least within that quarter century, uh, it's the first time that in two years in a row the budget has actually been cut. And reduced without a drop off in services. So, uh, along with my, you know myself, and you know this is not a one man show. I have six other colleagues, uh, both Democrat and Republicans, uh, that we work together in a bipartisan way to achieve that, uh, which I consider a uh, a pretty significant accomplishment. Well, to, to a lot of people can, all over New Jersey, and I'm sure all over the country, county government is kind of a big question mark. It's a it's a mystery. So. Um, could you explain what the uh, county government usually does and some of the stuff it does well and some of the stuff it needs improvement in? Sure. Um, I mean, county government, I mean, you know, here in Bergen County, you have 70 municipalities. Uh, they have a mayor and a council, and they have, you know, workers that take care of generally the, the things that pertain to the town. At the Here in Bergen County, um, um, we also take care of, you know, the most basic things such as the county roads, different from the municipal roads. Uh, there's also Bergen County um, Police Force, there's the Sheriff's Department, so on and so forth. Um, Bergen County is um, lucky enough to have beautiful parks, so there's there, there's a group that take care of, takes care of the park. You have a uh, county prosecutor. You have a county surrogate. You have a county clerk, uh, and then underneath that, uh, you have, uh, along with that, you know, you have the Bergen Community College, 
although they have some autonomy, the county contributes uh, millions of dollars to uh, the education of uh, the students that attend there. Um, we have a, a health department. We have human services. And, of course, tr you know, as in any organization these days, you need a, a large and robust IT uh, department. Um, so uh, at the county level, it's, it's really the things that are non-municipal that we, we take care of uh, and, and address. Um, our budget is approximately $500 million a year. We have approximately 2,300 employees and broken out to many of the uh, departments that I just uh, listed. I'm sure I left that one or two, but I'm doing off the, this off the top of my head. $500 million, that that is a lot of money. What do you Definitely. think is um, some of the, the biggest challenges facing uh, Bergen County as, as a county? I, I think the the biggest thing is 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 getting is starting to run the county like a like a business, uh, and, and not in the negative things that you hear a lot of today, but uh, as I I'll give you a uh, an anecdote uh, when I um, uh, at my first I think it was my first meeting as a freeholder in which we would, and again the what the freeholders do mostly is we we control the purse strings for Bergen County. And if there was a spending request where somebody, where one of the departments wanted to buy, um, you know, upgrade their IT equipment or buy a truck or, or do, do any of these, these things, um, uh, they would become before the freeholder board and, you know, we would uh, e either approve or disprove uh, the, the resolution that would come to us for spending. And I recall, uh, at my, I think it was my first meeting, I, I asked the question, well, what is the ROI on this, uh, on this uh, expenditure? And the person looked at me and had no idea what ROI or return on investment was. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, I knew that I was starting at, at, at ground level. Now, I'm not saying that everybody didn't, doesn't know what ROI is, but I, I was just surprised that this was a pretty, pretty senior person who, if you don't mind, will remain – remain nameless, uh, did not know what it is. So th the challenge for me, uh, I picked up right away, is to start to have them focus in on uh, those types of things, that this is not their money they're spending, it is the taxpayer's money spending. When I was in the private sector, um, I worked for my shareholders. As a government, elected government official, my, share, my shareholders are the taxpayer, and I approach it in that way. And I try to, wh whoever I can influence, to um, take the same approach. In fact, people see me on the elevator, and, you know, it's not uncommon for me to say, well, good morning, and what have you done for the taxpayer today? <laughs> Very nice. So what, what, how, how large is the freeholder board, and, and what's the, the split between uh, Republicans and Democrats? There are there are seven freeholders. Uh, it's right now there are five Republicans and two Democrats. Um, election comes uh, in November. Um, there's you know uh, it's always it's always a, you know a very uh, vigorous race, um, and um, you know depending on the outcome of the election, uh, the Republicans will either retain or, or lose control of the uh, freeholder board. We. It, to retain control, we we would have to uh, at least uh, win one or the seats that's up this year. So there are two seats that are up this year. I beg your pardon. How many seats uh, are up this year? Two. Two seats. Very nice. Uh, so what are what are I know a lot of people have probably read, uh, you know, in the paper um, in, up in Bergen County about the attempted consolidation and the back and right. forth between. Uh, putting the sheriff's department and the county uh, police department together. Uh, right. What do you feel on that issue? Uh, well, you know, I'm the uh, I'm the major proponent that this should should occur. I believe that there can be very very significant savings uh, by merging the county police with with, with the uh, with the sheriff's department. And there are others that disagree with me. Um, you know, this is a legitimate disagreement. You know, on on on, a, on an approach. Um, 
my my experience, I, I've been involved with uh, mergers and acquisitions uh, for uh, you know you know most of my adult life, and uh, you know, and I just I just know the sense that you know where you look for those kind of synergies that could occur by merging, in this case, two law enforcement agencies. Uh, I think there could be substantial. Uh, and significant cost savings to uh, the, the taxpayers of Bergen County. This is a new, new uh, endeavor. Nothing like this has really occurred, uh, certainly here in Bergen County, although it has occurred in several other counties ar around the state. But for Bergen County, um, uh, you know, I keep hearing a lot of people say, oh, but Bergen County is very unique. Well, I, I think the people are unique. I don't think law enforcement you know, although you know the the, well, the men and women that work there are, are very dedicated, there's nothing especially unique about law enforcement, and I think um, uh, it could be done, um, and particularly under the leadership, if it were to occur, and it, it's an open question at, still at this point. Um, I I'm, I have the highest confidence in our uh, our current sheriff, Sheriff Sordino, that uh, he could bring this all together. Uh, of course, you know, working in conjunction with uh, the county executive, Count Kathy Donovan, um, the two of them working together, both of them are very, very, uh, br very bright, very experienced. Uh, and if they were to work together, I am certain that the taxpayers uh, would be the beneficiaries. Uh, what else is on your agenda in terms of uh, saving the taxpayers of Bergen County their hard-earned dollars? Well, I, I think, I, you know, it, but believe it or not, it, 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 I always make the analogy that if you, in the private sector, um, it's like sometimes to effectuate change. It's almost like riding a speedboat where you can make very sharp turns very quickly. When you get into government, as I'm, I'm finding, it's, it's, a, it's a very um, large bureaucracy, and the comparison to the speedboat would be like turning the Queen Mary. And you will eventually get there, but it takes a longer time. So I've always been a proponent, even when I was in the uh, private sector, is that you, you have to uh, establish the mentality of the, the workforce, that you work for the taxpayer, or in the private sector, it was work for the shareholder and your customers, and that, you know, it should be that focus. So what I have initiated, and in fact, we're going to have a, a, a ceremony uh, uh, tomorrow night, I've, I, I've initiated what I, I've, I've dubbed the Taxpayer Advocate Award. And this is where I recognize um, individuals or groups that have made significant savings for the taxpayers, and in real terms, not, well, I'm going to do this in the future. This is what they have done now. Um, we have, and one of the major things is, look, as a, as, a, as, a, as a legislator, that's what the freeholders do, I don't have control over the day-to-day -day operations, uh, very different from some of their management assignments that I've had in the past. But I, I want to be able to influence the people that are doing the job day in and day out. Give them the recognition that if they come up and really look and look for ways to save money and you know with teamwork and 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 coming up and thinking out of the box in some cases, that I think has a has an effect across the board uh, in all the departments of the county. Uh, tomorrow night we're going to recognize somebody from uh, um, uh, the law department that uh, in, the, in less than 12 months um, for some outstanding uh, arrears and so on and so forth that were owed the, were owed the county, he has uh, on his own brought, brought in an, an additional $850,000 that the, the taxpayers perhaps would not have seen uh, other than through his efforts. So I want to recognize this gentleman uh, tomorrow night. Um, you know, it's it's the the same thing in terms of having people when they're looking at different things. You know, uh, Josh, um, you you'll I see a lot of these great programs that the uh, the county offers. Uh, that, for instance, Meals on Wheels, and they do a lot of things with uh, uh, abused women and, and and all of this kind of stuff. A lot of things on mental health, et cetera, that are 
uh, very, very good. And generally, and, and, pro and certainly in better times, these programs would certainly on the merits just stand uh, on their own. And I still think they do, but I have given them a, a, a different perspective. I said, look, you know, you have a lot of people that in this economy that are, uh, have lost their jobs, facing foreclosure, are on fixed income, et cetera, et cetera. And they look at government as, you know, just a, you know, their money is going over there and it's not coming to them. So there's a, there's a lesson that I'm trying to teach them all that they have to recognize, such as in the, say, we provide some mental health services to somebody. I try to get to the idea, say, look, you have to be able to say, yes, this is a great program because it helps the person, indeed. But secondarily, you have to come up with, again, I'll get back to the ROI or the cost justification, where you start talking about by you providing this kind of service to somebody, you keep them out of the jail. That's a savings to the taxpayer. You keep them out of the, um, let's say, some of the, 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 health, the, the hospitals. You keep, you're keeping them out of the homeless shelter, you, et cetera, et cetera, and quantify and, and justify what you're doing, and and it's a matter of, of making sure that people understand that indeed, yes, this is a great program that you're offering, but at the same time, it has to has to look for ways for uh, to justify it and look for ways to help and and advise and, and, and as I'm saying and, and let their their shareholders, which are the taxpayer, know that this is their monies are being well spent. So it's it's a mentality thing, uh, and looking for ways of uh, consolidating, looking for ways to you know to establish these synergies where you have the one plus one equals three uh, approach to doing business. Um, um, I, I, I commend uh, the county executive and her staff for uh, taking the mantle on this as well. They have done a lot of things. Uh, in terms of consolidating different departments and uh, doing a much better job on vehicles. Uh, there was a, a, a real problem with, with take-home vehicles and so on and so forth and uh, the fuel use. And it's all, those costs are all borne by the, uh, on the taxpayer. Uh, the sheriff, as an example, has gone in there and he has just really uh, cut the amount of overtime that they used to work. And um, another significant savings to the taxpayer. Uh, and, we, uh, and we as the freeholder board are, have remained vigilant. We have very sharp pencils when we start looking at uh, the budget submitted as well as any spending resolutions that become before us. So it's not going to happen overnight, but we have a lot of successes that we could already point to, which I'm very proud. I'm very proud to be serving with uh, you know my fellow freeholders as well as the county executive, the sheriff, and all the other um, uh, department heads, um, not every one of them come in with the, the right attitude and they're trying to do the right thing. We don't always agree, and as you can see in the paper, we have some disagreements. But it's not personal. You know, it, I think it's healthy that, you know, we have uh, policy disagreements, uh, but we get through that because uh, the next day there's something else that we need to work on together to uh, make, uh, make the government more streamlined and, and more focused on the people where it's supposed to serve. Well, it definitely sounds uh, like you definitely, like you said, have a, have a sharp pencil, uh, in particular when it comes to fiscal issues, uh, turning to, you know, the, the, the elephant in the room that we can't ignore, the 900-pound gorilla of the uh, national elections or the federal elections for the, the president. Uh, what, what's your viewpoint on the issue? Well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a firm uh, Mitt Romney supporter. Um, I think he made an excellent choice in, uh, choice in uh, picking Paul Ryan uh, as his vice president. I've always been a fan of Paul. Um, I, I, I see a lot of the things that he is trying to accomplish at the, at the national level is exactly what I'm trying to do uh, at the county level. Um, I, I think uh, people are, uh, are kidding themselves if they think that uh, we could go on um, uh, in, in, on the spending that we're doing. Um, the last thing we want to do is allow our country to turn into Greece. Um, um, fortunately for the United States of America, you know, we're probably a few years away from, um, you know, the edge of that cliff. But um, I'm, I'm very confident that um, um, Governor Romney and 
uh, Congressman Ryan are the right choice for, for the country. Um, and, you know, we've got to get some of these entitlement programs under control. Um, I, I would really wish that uh, people would really study the Ryan plan as an example, is the right way of uh, uh, approaching things. Um, you, know, um, I, you know, there's no money tree out there. I think, uh, you know, we, we owe the people that uh, have worked all their lives that they get the benefits that they paid into, all of them. Uh, the plan that he laid out that nobody um, uh, over 55 years of age uh, will be affected by any of the recommendations. Uh, sometimes that's lost in the in, in the media. Um, and but you know we have we have to address these issues. I, and I think um, I, I think they're on the right track, and uh, they have my full support. On the social issues, um, you know the. As to my experience and, and, and my knowledge, uh, and one of the things that attracted me to uh, joining the, the GOP uh, and conservatism in general is the Big Ten. Um, but on the social issues, are you also uh, as uh, as conservative as you are on the fiscal issues? Uh, on, or on some, on some issues, um, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. Um, um, I'm, I'm pro-life mm -hmm. and anti-death penalty. Um, I think there's a consistency there that sometimes I'm, uh, I'm different on the uh, than my uh, uh, some of my uh, more conservative my more conservative friends. Uh, I'm very uh, I'm disappointed in the current administration. Well, I'm, I'm getting onto foreign policy again. But on on social issues, on on the issues of, of, of gay marriage and, and things of this nature, um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a devout Catholic. Uh, however, uh, in my my religion. Um, you know, pro, you know, prohibits. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a man, man and a woman. However, I, I just think that you know that should not be the major issue that should uh, change people. Um, you know, I have a lot of a lot of my friends are are, are gay, um, and you know, look, I, I don't think that should be a deciding issue w one way or the other. I, I think the frankly, I, I just think that the uh, that horse is already out of the barn. Um, I think it's just a matter of time uh, before, uh, and maybe 25 years from now, that we'll look back on this, the discussion about uh, uh, gay marriage and everything else. And you know, I, and I just think it will be a, a footnote in history because I just think it's going to occur anyway, whether it be uh, from you know federal mandate or uh, or um, uh, you know the states doing it. And I see it as a the, the divide seems to be an age thing. I think um, in general, I think younger people uh, are more in favor or are less inclined to be against uh, um, annual gay marriage, whereas I think the, the older generation is more against it. Well, you know, obviously this is going to change over time, and my prediction is is that uh, you know this will just be the norm uh, 25 years from now or so, or probably even even, even less. Um, you know, I don't get upset one way or the other. If, if tomorrow, you know, the, the voters of New Jersey or however it would occur and said, okay, uh, we approve of gay marriage, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. I, I understand. Um, on uh, touched for a quick second on foreign policy, um, and I know, you know, it's, it's not germane um, to, uh, to uh, the Bergen County issues and, and freeholder uh, politics, but uh, I, I do have to ask, uh, what, how do you view uh, America and uh, in the world around us, and, and you know the relationship between the two? Um, I, I think um, I, I think America is is still the beacon for the rest of the world. Um, um, you know, you see hello. that people just hello. Are you, are you still there, Josh? You're coming hello. in a little bit choppy. You still there? Yeah, I'm still there. Can you hear me now? All right, now I can hear you. Yes. Um, no, I'm just saying that uh, you know I think uh, you know the United States got to you know uh, get back to um, you know the basic fundamentals. Uh, you know I'm not I'm not a big fan of nation building. Uh, I think as the premier superpower in in the world, um, you know I think we have to look after our own self interest. Um, um, however, you know, in, in, in certain respects, I think, you know, there would be an occasion that we would have to go in and, uh, you know, and 
take down this tyrant or that one. But you know, I think it has to be done in a more strategic way. Uh, like I said, I'm not I'm not in favor at all of uh, you know even in Iraq. You know, we got really I think I caught in a, in a quagmire. I think we could have uh, gone in there, finished that we had to do, and um, you know uh, got out a, a, a little quicker. Um, you know, particularly in the Middle East. Um, you know, I, I'm a little concerned over uh, the current administration and. Um, uh, and the way they are, uh, uh, you know, our strongest ally in the region, of course, is Israel. And uh, they have taken a, um, I don't know, a backhand to Israel to some extent, in my view. Uh, and it's another reason why um, I'm, I'm a big supporter of uh, Mitt Romney. I think he'll, he'll, he'll look to reverse that. Um, um, you know, we, we have people, today is 9-11. Um, I've, I've attended a, a bunch of different uh, ceremonies, and it just reinforces my my thought that uh, you know we we must remain vigilant uh, and 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 support our friends around the world. Now, have you uh, have you ever thought about running for for higher office, for either for state assembly, state senate, or, or even for U.S. Congress? I, I, I've thought about it. Um, you know, uh, I'm pretty happy in, in what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm, I'm committed to uh, finishing out my um, my first term. I have, uh, you know, one more year to go. Uh, I'll be in office for 2013. Um, but, you know, clearly, I, you know, all of those options are on, on the table. Um, uh, it takes a lot of money and a lot of time to uh, run for office. Uh, I've done well in life, but I'm not a rich man by any means. Uh, and, um, you know, in order to, particularly for higher office, um, um, you know, it, it takes a lot of uh, support, both uh, in terms of uh, manpower, but <laughs> it also takes a lot of support in terms of financial. And, you know, I love politics from the standpoint of doing what we're doing right now, Josh, and talking about the issues and so on and so forth. I, I, I just love getting out in front of people and, uh, having them hear my ideas and then taking their ideas. The part that I don't like about politics is asking people for money, um, and uh, that's a that's a real turnoff for me in politics because uh, uh, it, it's very expensive these days to run a uh, run a good campaign. And um, sometimes, you know, we've seen it many times where uh, politicians um, become too influenced by uh, special interests and uh, you know they become uh, automatons uh, for these special interests and, um, um, and and I think it's a it's a human condition that anyone would you know in higher office has to worry about because unless you're you know uh, you know a billionaire or a multimillionaire that you could self fund and it's it's a part of politics that I really think has to be um, uh, taken care of because there's just too much money in politics so to, to get to your question, I, you know, of course, yes, I, I would love to the opportunity to go go to higher office, uh, but there are some uh, some roadblocks to that in terms of uh, the practicalities of it. Well, just just to be uh, completely frank, I, I think you should. Um, I don't think I agree with you 100 percent on uh, on political stances, but I, I would love for you to be a candidate and for you to, you know, t take uh, you know all the issues where we do agree. To the to the next level. Yeah, um, I mean, and, and, and I think that's that's part of it, Josh. I think a lot of times people um, uh, look at different issues, and you know they become one issue of uh, people. You know, I've seen, and, and and I've seen it, and you know, it could be any number of issues. And but I think any person, any candidate, has to be looked at from the entirety, and not just uh, just one issue. Uh, you know, if, if there's only if there's ten issues that you're interested in, the person dis disagrees you with you on nine of them. Well, that's one thing. But if you disagree on one or two, um, you know, you got have you have to make your own judgment. Uh, you, you remind me of uh, of the wise words of uh, Reagan, who once said that someone that agrees with you 80 percent of the time is a friend, not a 20 percent traitor. No, 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 you're absolutely correct, and and I never heard. I, I'm a big Ronald Reagan fan. I hadn't heard that one, and Josh, I will use it. 
<laughs> well, thank you so much. This is, this has been uh, uh, very enlightening and, and helped uh, educate uh, myself personally about the goings on of county government and in Burton County, uh, and I'm sure our listeners will, will really be excited. Um, so uh, thank you so much for joining us. And, Josh, and, uh, thank you, and, uh, and uh, good night to you and to your listeners. Have a good evening.